So hey guys, this is Dammit Rogue Studios. So right here on the table is my brand new Tokyo Marie USB 9. It is a very good looking pistol. It's been a very long time since I've used something like this. Uh, one of my first pistols was a KSC M9 and a KSC uh, USP 45 uh, in 10. And uh, this is just brings back a lot of memories. Uh, I must say, all the controls and everything and the feeling of the grip is very nice. And aesthetically too, the grip aesthetic, I don't know if you guys can notice on camera, uh, everything on the uh, left side of the pistol is pretty good looking because it has all the proper markings and stuff. The Tokyo Marie markings are on the other side right over here and also on the Picatinny rail adapter, which you have to install yourself. Uh, the kit, the pistol, it does come with an Allen key for you to install this. Now, so far, uh, what I've done is that I have installed a nine ball type bore outer barrel. Uh, later on in this video, I actually do a test that shows you what the uh, gas efficiency is roughly like. And I also show you what the FPS is roughly like with Airsoft Surgeon 0.2 gram BBs and Airsoft Surgeon Green Gas. Uh, I did two tests on both the stock inner barrel, which was on the table a moment ago. on the stock in a barrel and I also did a test uh, using the 9 ball uh, 100 millimeter uh, type bore barrel 6.00 type bore for the Tokyo Marie HK45 um, because when you have it installed it's perfectly flush with the outer barrel as you can see it's actually still inside the outer barrel so let me see if I can get a super close up of it there you go. So the fitment is actually very nice. Now this video was not a video review or anything like that. This is just primarily me fidgeting with stuff. So uh, um, I will be gaming with this. Um, I'll actually tell you some of the results already, uh, but I filmed the results in case if you guys are interested in seeing. So the results of the test is that the power of the pistol is right at 0 0.9 to 1 joules. Uh, that is with the hop-up turned off. So basically, um, it's not bad. Not bad at all. Considering that all I did was swap the inner barrel. And I know some of you guys are curious to see what I do with a pistol that's brand new. Uh, there's nothing that I do in particular that's special. It's more like I like to be cautious. So in the winter, uh, I like to use green gas because, you know, why not? Uh, in the summer, if I'm using a completely Tokyo Mar stock Tokyo Marie pistol with a plastic slide and everything, I will use top gas instead. Right? You, you change it up according to the situation uh, if you intend to use it mostly stock, uh, that which is my intention, by the way unless a detonator happens to come up with a very nice slide. Uh, but I will consider doing a few other kinds of tests uh, besides leaving the stock. You know, I, I am considering using something like this. This is a nine ball uh, Tokyo Murray USP hammer spring. So it might fit. I'm not entirely sure if they use the exact same hammer spring yet, but uh, we will see. So let's first get this mount open. So this is their arm arm mount. They give you the two screws already, it seems. And they also give you a little instruction sheet. And the mount itself, which is actually quite nicely packaged, as expected from Tokyo Murray. So that's the mount. It's plastic. This part is metal, cast in metal. And then the screws. Normally, I would advise you guys to use a dab of blue thread lock, but uh, in this case, I just want to install it first. So I'm, I'm gonna do it according to the instructions. So 
so there's two screws in there. Those are the two screws for the site. I can apparently slip this off. Oh, okay. So it does slip off. It just slips off by pushing it off. And then take them out. Orient it like so. And slip it off. Hmm. So at first glance, the mount, there's a there's a bit of play on the mount if you don't screw it in. So there's a bit of a gap there. Not a big fan of that. That can potentially snap the screw. I predict that it might snap the screw. So I'm going to be very cautious of that. I'm actually... Well, I do have spare screws for this. But either way, I'd rather than not do that. Okay, so that's the mount. The mount moves. Even if I secured the screw, the mount will still move. I can move it a little bit right now by hand. Not, I don't like that. This is, I don't like this design at all. So you can add a shim here at the back to prevent it from moving. But for now, uh, let's just use it since I bought it already. Okay. Okay, so please be gentle with your USP when you get yours. Okay, so that's it right there. So I will say that this does look very cool. So this light right here is a real stream light. Uh, you, if you guys follow me on my channel, you guys already know I have a stream light. That's it right there. No, oh, okay. I don't feel any wobble now. Huh. Okay. For now, it feels quite solid. Although, I, I still, of course, ultimately, I don't like plastic mounts. Although there was a part that's metal, ultimately, I prefer something else. But this is all to try Tokyo Mori's solution. I so, hope you guys can see that. Focus. So that's roughly what I see. Now, um, if you turn it up high, so I'm going to turn it on the high setting now. If I turn it up on the high setting, it's very flary. So you guys can't see this on camera. You see the dot, right? Can you see that there's a bit of a reflection? Uh, on top of the dot, there's a bit of a, of a red cloud. Uh, I forget what the proper term is because I'm not a big fan of optics in general. So, uh, as in, like, I'm not a big fan of using optics for anything, really. The only reason why I like it is because it looks very cool. So there's a bit of gas in here, I guess.
Okay. So I'm going to be using this for a while, I think. This is going to be my new baby. Because I already have two spare mags for it. So this thing is going to go in with all the rest of my... Uh, my gear because I'm going to be packing this for an outdoor game soon. I'm going to be carrying this with my uh, with my HK416 actually. That's the reason why I wanted to get this because I figured I you know HK HK why not? Uh, I will say like this is quite quite a good looking pistol when you look at it very closely and when you actually have it in hand. Like these things are are pretty nice. And the decocking is feels actually uh, there's something to note with the slide release and also with the safety um, it is quite stiff so when you push the slide release the slide release is not actually touching the slide it's really stiff and how it works is that you see that metal piece that's inside here that metal piece pushes up against the bulba housing unit. Uh, that uh, that piece is lifted by your slide lock. Uh, that's what causes your slide lock. So the so it's not relying on the slide for the slide lock. So this so that means that you won't bust up your slide over here. Now as for the uh, the decocker, so decocking the pistol require does require a bit of effort. Very very clicky. The detent at the back over here is actually quite solid. Right, you, you can clearly hear this on camera. That's actually not bad. And after you snap it, you see it snapped on safe. So I'm going to do that again. Decock, let it go. Ends on safe. I really like that. Uh, that's just like my old KSC USP. Uh, whenever you're holstering your pistol, if you have it on, uh, well, let's say you're done firing, and when you holster your pistol, you can just hit the decocker, and then let it go, and then it'll, it'll automatically be on safe. So that's very nice. I really, I really like the USP, the, the handling of it sometimes. So anyways, that's it for the video. Uh, I'm going to be showing you guys the, uh, the shooting tests, and that'll be it. And I'll be doing a review some other time. So this is with Aerosoft Surgeon Green Gas and Aerosoft Surgeon 0.2 gram BBs. The reason why I'm using the green gas is because this is the only gas that I have on hand right now. Uh, ideally, I would be using top gas in the summer and I'll be using green gas in the winter. Because in the winter in Hong Kong, it can be really cold. As you can see, it's actually at 9 degrees outside right now, which I can confirm for you. It's pretty cold outside. Uh, in my room, it's probably not 9 degrees. We don't really have any heaters. But um, it's it's not that cold in my room right now, but that gives you an idea of roughly what the temperature is like outside. So let's do the FPS test. I'm sorry I don't have a way to measure the temperature of the mag, but it's the best I can do. So let me see. So that's the whole magazine cleared, and my magazine is cold. So let's just do a gas efficiency test while we're at it. And we are going to reload this with BBs right now in front of you. So this is the magazine just now. Just let me refill my loader. So if you want, I guess you can really complain about me and the reload time, but this is the best I can do again. Okay, 
so that's basically full. I'm going to try to squeeze one more round in there. Okay, so the magazine's completely full. I can't even push the spring any further down. So we're going to try to clear this magazine as well. The blowback is getting weaker. Okay, so so far I can clear two mags. So I think this is a good enough demonstration of the gas efficiency. It's It clearly works perfectly fine as expected. This is with a plastic slide. Um, I expect these results are quite normal, be quite frankly, be quite honest with you guys. So the FPS uh, dropped from roughly around 303 to 269, I believe. So we can actually see the data on this. So the max was 303.8, the minimum was 269.9, which is the very last shot. So the performance of all of this is quite predictable. And the average was 283.6 FPS, uh, doing two magazine dumps on the exact same magazine. So you can imagine that the FPS is actually not all that bad for a stock Tokyo Marie. Uh, may I also remind you that um, again, this is with the temperature being a little bit cold. Um, this is with doing two magazine dumps, so the magazine is cold. Not bad at all. That's actually not a bad result. So I would imagine that this result will, will improve by quite a bit uh, after we take the 9-ball tight bore and we put it in. So I'm going to be using this again with the stock hop-up rubber. Uh, I won't be upgrading the hop-up rubber it's because that won't be a fair test. So. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so we're back. I swapped out the inner barrel. You can actually see the 9-ball inner barrel in there. Uh, this is for a HK45. This is precisely 100 millimeters, as noted in the package. 100 millimeters for a HK45, 6.00 type bore, and it costs 220 Hong Kong dollars. You can also read the label right there. And uh, this is a fully loaded up, oh sorry, my bad, my mistake, one more. So it's a fully loaded magazine, uh, the te again the, the temperature is roughly the same. Pretty cold tonight in Hong Kong, oops, sorry. So let me aim a little bit carefully. So we're just going to go through a test and then we're going to load up the BBs and keep going. Okay, so clearly the FPS is higher. So let's reload the magazine. I'm doing this as fast as I can. Okay, so we can film one more. Okay, so it's a fully loaded up magazine again. Now, uh, I know this time for the 9-ball test, I load up the magazine a little bit faster. Um, this is also the exact same mag, so maybe the cooldown is affecting it. I don't care because this is still a, a realistic test of what, you what would happen if you were using it in a game. Because you would be refilling your magazine with gas in between games anyways. So, let's go. Sorry. 
Blowback getting weaker. Okay, so that's it right there. Let's check the results. So the highest was 312. The lowest was 279.2. So difference, a big difference of 33, which is again, okay, because we're doing two magazine dump tests on the exact same magazine without letting it rest. So the average was 292.4. So the FPS did increase as a result of adding a simple type bore of roughly around 10 FPS, which is actually reflected in the highest number and also in the average as well. Because if I recall correctly, the average was roughly around 283, I think it was, or something like that. So it did get a decent amount of FPS boost. Now, I would imagine that you can improve it a little bit further, of course, uh, in the future, if you upgrade the air seal, uh, or perhaps upgrade the hop-up rubber as well, maybe the hammer spring. Uh, I am going to do a little bit more investigation on this, um, and I do have a hammer spring that I can test, but I'm not going to test this at the moment. It's because I want to use the pistol stock, but with my inner barrel and hop-up rubber of choice configuration, I'm going to be using it as stock as it can possibly be and just see what the performance is like in the long term uh, before I do any other changes. So that's it for the FPS and chrono testing.